welcome to Creative Mornings, Monterey Peninsula. It's a lot of people here today. Um, really a lot of people. Maybe just give yourselves like a round of applause for being here this morning. Woo. We have a really special guest to my right on the floor. It's actually my daughter, Lila. Uh, she's been wanting to come to Creative Mornings uh, for now several months. And finally, because she has the day off today, uh, she can be here. So I'm a little nervous in front of Lila for some reason, because <laughs> she's actually amazing in front of groups. And uh, she's, this is, we're gonna, I'm just going to hand this off to her like a succession at some point, so in a couple more years. Um, and so, you know, we started Creative Mornings um, just last year with this idea that we could help reduce fragmentation in our creative community across different mediums, across generations, across the peninsula, uh, between like Salinas and the peninsula and the different parts, you know, like rivalries between like PG and Monterey that go back to like high school and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Grace, you know about that, right? Uh, big time rivalries, yeah. Uh, and. I remember that there was a point where Mike Buffo and I were just like literally introducing Creative Mornings to one person at a time. Mike, can you wave? Mike is the uh, official videographer of uh, Monterey County. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, but now look at this room. It's extraordinary. It's humbling, honestly. And um, are there a couple of people I want to thank kind of to help bring this group together? Um, Cassie in the back. Can you wave, Cassie? Um, all those, all those amazing emails you receive, um, and it's, we have to like kind of wrestle with the system, right? <laughs> and then we were basically shut off from MailChimp, yeah, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. They made us start a new pay, and we didn't want another subscription. It's like streaming, you know? Um, and so thank you, Cassie. And then Jillian, who's actually not here today, does all our social media. And similarly, there was a time where I think there was one follower, uh, and that was, I think, me. And then, <laughs> and then Mike, I think I told Mike to follow it. So then there were two. Uh, and now I think we have like over 200 followers or something, which is totally wild, you know. So that's really amazing. We also have some of our past speakers here. I saw Zach, I saw Megan, I saw others. So thank you for being here. The idea that you can be a speaker in front of our group and then also participate with our group is actually a part of our kind of community in the sense that you can that you come up and, and you do that and you and you participate but then you have the humility to come back it's the first time i think we've had not only babies but multiple babies which is fantastic <laughs> we're totally baby friendly um and this baby is like very like a total hipster baby too like <laughs> like creative mornings baby with like yeah that one i can't quite see it well enough but it looks like really hip too <laughs> we accept non-hip babies also, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. So we have a, um, so a little bit about Creative Mornings. Um, let me tell you a little bit about this thing. So basically there's a woman named Tina uh, Roth Eisenberg. Uh, she was Swedish. She moved to, she still is Swedish. She moved to New York and she basically wanted to kind of find her people. And she's like, where are the creative minded people who, who want to build community? Where, where are these folks? And so she started to uh, kind of talk about this idea, and then this idea took hold, and then 15 years later, you have chapters all over the world, and, uh, and Tina, Tina's still engaged, and, and I'll um, you know, text her a photo of the room, which someone should just take and then text to me, and then and she'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, you know, and, 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 um, and so it's, it's this sort of uh, global thing. And um, one of the things that um, we learned really early on uh, when I was working on this is that there were actually, I think, three chapters in the Ukraine. And that actually connects a little bit back to our story for today, which uh, Sean will, will help introduce in just a second. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. That's kind of the primary place we're creating content. And then you can always kind of get a sense of what the next uh, event will be on this website. Um, it's always free. There's always breakfast. There's always coffee. Those are kind of the, the things where most of the time we're going to be here at Wave Street Studios. Thank you also to Rhett and Judy who are, you know, a, a lot. So yes, definitely give them a hand a round of applause. Um, you know, what Rhett, is, Rhett it says to me, you know, like, you know, I want to be able to introduce the space to folks, but I'm so busy, you know, producing the event. Uh, you know, in the, it's the morning, like they're like waking up and then welcoming 90 people <laughs> into their home. Uh, and so if you're holding an event, if you're thinking, you know, please think about this space. It's an extraordinary space. It's a community space. Rhett and Judy uh, built this by hand. 
and and uh, it's an incredible story. And so, uh, if you're thinking about this, thinking about an event space, please consider it. Um, a little bit about me: we moved here um, a few years ago, really to kind of pursue a, a kind of a different space for our for our family. We decided not to raise our kids in Silicon Valley. How's that going? So so. Yeah, oh God, she's so embarrassed. Uh, and uh, and so um, yeah, so you know we have we have uh, uh, partners. Um, can we, this uh, this actually does cost money to run, uh, and so if you're interested, in, it's it's maybe between five to seven hundred dollars a month to run for the space, for videography, for uh, for promotion, um, you know, for some reimbursements and things like that. So if you want to contribute in small ways, just reach out to me. Um, there are different ways. You could sponsor the breakfast. You could sponsor the coffee. Um, we also will have folks who sponsor the space. So they might say, I want to host it in my event space, and I'm going to kind of pay for that privilege, things like that, just to kind of break even. This is just break even. Um, so um, that's something I also wanted to mention. Okay, I'm going to introduce Sean Perlmutter. Where are you, Sean? Come on up. Um, uh, Sean is a, a STEAM member of the community. Uh, he was one of our earliest sort of supporters. We have a handful of people in this community who had actually attended Creative Mornings events in the past. And so they were able to give Mike and I some guidance on the community and and mm -hmm. kind of the, the things to expect and and what to do and you know i i said I, oh gosh i'm worried about this sean would say don't worry that will take care of itself or something like that and and i think if you've gotten to know sean he's uh you know he's, he's warm he's genuine he's got just incredible energy um and um and just excited that he's going to be our, our co-host for today and he's going to introduce the theme and introduce kate and and he's been working with kate uh which we really appreciate so i'm going to hand it back to whoever. i'm going wireless babe oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I feel so many beautiful people in this room. And I say it that way because beauty comes from within, right? It's not about what you see. It's what you are emanating. And I just feel the energy and the beauty of all of you. Thank you so much for attending today. <sighs> Breathing is a really important, wonderful, and grounding thing to do when you're about to start anything important. Would you collectively take one big breath with, big breath with me? Inhale and exhale. It feels so good. I love breath work. Another thing that I really love is another grounding, beautiful thing. It's gratitude. I'd love to hear from three people right now what you are grateful for. Throw your hand up. What's something that you're grateful for today? Uh, my kids. My, my kids. Yeah. Great. That's one fantastic thing. We are all so grateful for the future generation. Thank you so much. I love it. What are you grateful for today? I'm grateful that Shaheen told me about this place so I could come here. This place. Absolutely. We are grateful. And thank you so much for coming. One other thing. Somebody, that, somebody else that you are, somebody, tell me something that you are grateful for today. What are you grateful for? Friends, God, thank goodness for friends. What would life be like without friends? I am very grateful for Creative Mornings Monterey, and we all collectively are incredibly, or should be, incredibly grateful for Danny Bernstein, who is helming this thing. This guy is absolutely incredible. And this chapter has really thrived and will continue to grow because of his leadership. So we all should be in a state of gratitude for him. For those of you who know me, you might say, oh yeah, Sean is that extroverted social performer guy. And you wouldn't be wrong, but you're leaving out the handsome charismatic part. That <laughs> part needs to be there too. But one thing you may not know about me is that I'm also a bit of a word nerd. I love etymology, the, the study of words. You as well, yes, and, uh, and I really get into that. And I've been thinking about three words this week. I've been thinking about transcend, transform, and transmute. There's so much going on in the world today, right? There's a lot of strife, there's a lot of struggles, there's a lot of problems. And when we think about transcending those, 
trans meaning to go across and send meaning to get above, right? So transcending something is to get above and across something that might be really trying. Transform, I have a feeling everybody in this room knows what that word is because we think about an experience or ourselves that we need to transform and become something new. And I think transmute means essentially the same thing as transform. I first came across that word in, uh, I believe it was The Book of Secrets by Deepak Chopra. And he was talking about, uh, forgive me if I don't remember the story exactly, uh, but let's say somebody that um, uh, lost a loved one in a car accident who then went on to create a Mothers Against Drunk Driving chapter and do something good for the world and something good for themselves to heal. That was what he was saying was a transmuting experience. And I find that so juicy, so good. Everybody in this world will deal with suffering at some point in their lives, maybe with more frequency, maybe not, but it happens. It's part of being human. And if we can transmute that experience into something that is healthy and good for others, then we're on the path to a far less suffering world. And that I love. And that's what came up for me when I heard about our speaker today. Because to be crass, she's seen some shit. It's been something incredible in a very human way, but when you think about it in some destructive ways, and she has taken that experience and turned it into something that is healing for herself, good for the world, and what you're about to see, beautiful. Because she's a portrait photographer that makes gorgeous images. You're gonna get a taste of it tonight. You see it up here, uh, and has done it for a world of good. So it's really with my extreme pleasure, and I hope that you all will give a very warm welcome to our speaker today, Kate Kondra Tieva. I'm in Ukraine, in Kyiv, in high-rise building. Four in the morning, I'm asleep. But suddenly I heard sounds which reminded me, sounds of fireworks, as I thought. For some reason I felt anxiety. Someone on the floor above was packing on a hurry all his belongings and my friend knocked at the door. Kate, are you asleep? I said, no, what is going on out there? And she said, the war began. Let's imagine you watch every day the dream you watch, uh, you want to watch. It was like my life was looking. I had a dream life full of beautiful works, people having home, and of course, that day shifted reality I never anticipated. Uh, I didn't know that I will never be able to see my father again, that some of my friends will be killed, that places of my memories will be destroyed forever. But I'm here today to share not the pain, I hope that after this talk, when you go back to your normal life, you will appreciate your life much, much more. You will understand that the most important thing we have, the life itself. Let's go to the very beginning of this wild journey. I grew up in a family of medical workers and I expected to become a, a doctor but I never liked that. So I had this feeling I have only one possible uh, life path. 
and uh, other career paths were unworthy of attention of my family. They always used to say, Kate, you should have a respectful, a respectful job like a lawyer or doctor. You will not be able to make uh, money and to make living by creative job. So uh, even don't think about that. When I studied at medical school, I fell in love with a guy who was a photographer. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was looking for the best way to have more in common with him. Uh, he had uh, many hobbies, so uh, I thought maybe photography will be easier. Uh, I can ask something and uh, I thought I can deserve love. Maybe if I become um, good in photography, probably he will notice me and maybe uh, he will fall in love with me. <laughs> But things between us didn't work out and there were moments of doubt when I thought I take someone else's place uh, because they were naturally talented individuals um, who I think are genius, but I took it as a hobby and I felt I don't have the right to do this because I don't have a talent, I just had this um, passion and desire to be loved and uh, to be with this guy and I'm really happy that I didn't quit photography because for me now it feels like my lifelong passion. I was uh, I was dreaming of taking pictures of people who inspire me in many many different ways and I remember how I was studied at school and we had a huge hall with black and white uh, pictures uh, and photographs of people who were really impactful in history, scientists, artists, and uh, I really loved to spend hours there to, uh, to look at these portraits and to explore their works and uh, I think I really wanted to do something with people uh, many, many years before I became a portrait photographer. But, as I already mentioned, uh, nobody from my family supported this choice. Uh, they used to say, you have to, uh, you have to have a normal job, like lawyer or doctor. And uh, I started to read inspiring books about people who follow their passion. And even at the first sight, it looks like unsuccessful, but this People showed, uh, yeah, you can do that. Just follow your bliss, follow your heart, and doors will open for you. So I decided maybe I should try such an example in my home country, and I did it. I I found my mentor in Alan Badoev, Ukrainian director. I was inspired by his works and uh, interviews, and I dreamt to work with him. I sent a few emails during like three or four years and I never heard back. And I remember that moment when I decided finally to quit uh, medical school. I came uh, to school to sign documents, to drop out, uh, and fear held me back. My hands were shaking like this and I questioned myself, what if all of my friends and my family are right? I'll never be able to make a living uh, being an artist. And then I say to myself, if I'm on the right path, and I thought, hey, what is <laughs> the God universe? If I'm on the right path, please give me a sign. <laughs> so I just pushed the hand signed uh, documents and something incredible happened on the next morning. I received a request about fo the photo shoot from Alan Badoev. Uh, for me it was surprising because after that I worked with many famous people in Ukraine, but that day when I got a mail exactly from the person who inspired me much more than others, for me it was a sign that when you follow your passion, when you follow your dream, your inner voice, doors will open for you as uh, no doors for someone else. So uh, Alana opened the door for me uh, to work with many famous people for music album covers and uh, as behind scenes photographers. So 
uh, since that, I have a deep admiration for uh, movies and for photo shoots like this. Uh, because in Ukraine, it usually takes 24, 28 hours uh, without pause. Uh, this some of works uh, of works we created. Since that, uh, I started also to work as a portrait photographer on a deeper level. If you years ago. First time I noticed that all emails I get from different clients are pretty similar to each other. They are from different people, but the base was the same. Hi, Kate, I'm quitting uh, my job. I want to capture myself through your eyes right now on this time of transition. Oh, hi, Kate, I'm going through divorce. I would like to have a photo shoot because I want to remember myself right now. Uh, oh. Even more said, hi, Kate, I knew that I have uh, a cancer and I would like to memorize myself. Can you help with that? So it became a kind of therapy. It's funny that I quit medical school, but <laughs> um, pretty often people say it's uh, healing. So before every photo shoot, I have a meeting with client where I'm trying to feel on a deeper level the state they go going through. Uh, I have some home tasks. For example, I ask to create a playlist which consists soundtracks, songs, uh, which are associated with some important moments of life events. So it helped me to go much, much deeper. Sometimes it's really hard to take someone's pain and I feel every photo shoot is the moment to be vulnerable, to be open and just to accept yourself, to love yourself again. And I appreciate trust of every client I worked with. I met so many inspiring people in my life and I think in the life I uh, lived before quitting medical school this experience was uh, impossible because I was completely unhappy uh, I, yeah and now I think that choice changed my life and I see how it continued changing my life just because of that decision. That's why I think it's really important to do what you're really passionate about. If I uh, continue studying at medical school, I'm sure I, will <laughs> I couldn't be uh, a good doctor <laughs> just because I didn't like that. And uh, working with these people year by year, uh, I realized that it's about heroes, Johnny, because everyone I work with is a hero on his life path. And I wanted to share these stories because there are a lot behind the photographs. So I had my few experiences of interviews and then it uh, And then it uh, brought me to some especially interesting people. Um, I just want to show one of examples, uh, especially now during the war time. time. Her name is Tata Kepler. He, is, uh, he runs one of the best bars in Ukraine. Also, she is a musician and an artist. And when the war began, she started to deliver uh, medicine and uh, first aid efforts to small villages in Ukraine. Uh, and last year, President Zelensky even gave her an award and national legend of Ukraine. So we worked with Tata uh, one year ago. Uh, I took some pictures from her Instagram now um, just to show what he's doing. And for me, it's such an example of person who is going through this transformation. I think uh, life of each Ukrainian is movie by itself right now. And what I want to do to share stories of these people, uh, not only during the war, but uh, 
everyone I work with is someone who faces challenges in life, and I think no one of them expected that. But to see the beauty where it brings you, sometimes you face challenges and you think it's completely darkness, there is no way to go above this. What I want to show with sharing this story is that you always can find the light. At the very beginning of the war, I had to flee with only backpack. I even didn't have my camera. And uh, yeah, I just had to take one emergency backpack with documents and the most important things. And I asked myself, what if I never will have a chance to go back? What is the most important now? And I think when you are so close to the death, it's pretty clear what is really important in your life. That's what I experienced on that uh, first night in the bomb shelter. Because uh, as a question, how are you, meant I love you. I want you to be alive. And I asked myself what I want to take. And I took my gratitude journal, which I was writing in the bomb shelter. It helped me not to go <laughs> crazy <laughs> and to see the beauty and uh, I think it was just an example of my life when I understood even in such circumstances you always can find a reason to be grateful for. I was grateful for this bomb shelter that I'm not alone, that people I see first time in my life feel like, uh, feel like my family right now. Also I took my grandmother's photo and my little cup of tea, which was an essential part of my life even before the war, because I spent um, a few months in Sri Lanka and my teacher and I, before every yoga practice, had tea ceremony. So I understood it doesn't matter where I go, I will have this tea ceremony. For me, it's um, something where I can connect with the nature, with myself, and it will help me to see the beauty. And when I fled, I started to meet Ukrainians and I asked everyone, what is the most precious scene in your emergency backpack? And then I wrote the same on my Instagram stories. And I realized some people I know who are wealthy people who have a few houses, apartments, cars. One of them said, Kate, you know, I took my Batman toy because uh, he has a story about that. And uh, I was moved by their stories and I decided it's time for the project. On that moment, I thought I will never be able to take my camera again, to take pictures again, because uh, in such challenges of life, you, you can see the beauty. But I tried and uh, it was the beginning of the project about Ukrainian refugees and what was the most important in the emergency backpack. I want to share a couple of stories from this project. Uh, we will not have time for all of them, but I was deeply moved by the story of one little girl. Uh, her name's Lata. She told me a story like an adult. Uh, she uh, was at her grandma's ha uh, garden one week before the war and she found two halves of uh, walnut shells and she took them with her. And one week later when uh, the war began and mom said, hey, Zlata, we should leave. But in Ukraine during the law, we have um, during the war, we, we have these kinds of law that every man is obliged to stay in country. So it doesn't matter you are fight or no, you can't leave, you should be there. So her mom, her brother, uh, and she had to leave and she said goodbye to dad and she gave one half to him and another one to her and she said, I believe that that moment when two half became the one will happen very soon and her dad says he keeps an eye on these parts even better than his phone. Yeah. So it was very touching story for me. 
Another incredible story was about Elena uh, and the story of her canary. Elena is Kharkiv, which is my hometown. It's in eastern parts of Ukraine. And since the day first, this day, uh, this uh, city is under the bombs. So she took, uh, just as she told me, she took uh, a five liter plastic bottle. I had a picture of that, so she made um, some uh, air holes. She put her bot, uh, bird there and she had just a t-shirt and a pair of socks and documents and that is all. But she said, we, uh, we spent so many years with this canary and uh, I couldn't leave her there. Another story which is, I think, really sad. Since the second or third day of the war, I was uh, looking at posts of this girl on the Facebook. She's a kind of famous uh, in Ukraine. She works in music industry. So uh, we were friends on Facebook because uh, I met her a few times because of the work. And she was trying to find her mom. Her mom lived in Mariupol. During the war, uh, Mariupol was completely destroyed. So there is, I think, even no one building which stayed there. And uh, she took a kiss uh, from the apartment because her original plan was to go and uh, to pick her mom. But since the second uh, day, uh, she didn't have any connection and it was a scary, scary situation. At the end of March, I sent a message to Katerina. She uh, fled to Riga and I asked Kate, if you are ready to share the story, can I come? I will take a flight to Riga to talk to you and to take some portraits. And she said, let's do that. For two hours of interview, I cried. Uh, she was okay, but I cried uh, because uh, for me it was hard to understand the amount of pain she goes through. Uh, and uh, she was telling me how every day she is writing messages to her mom. Mom, I love you. I love you so much. Uh, right after that interview, I wanted to call immediately to my parents to say I love you. So please, after this talk, Call to your parents if you can, call to your children, uh, to your beloved people to say I love you, it's important. Uh, a few days after this interview, I sent uh, everything to Katerina and to ask her if you don't mind, can I post it today? I didn't post one by one, I just felt it's time for this story and she was surprised. Kate, I don't know why do you want to post it today, we just found mom. The only way to, um, to get her from there is um, through Russia, but she said it doesn't matter, the most important thing to know she is alive. And a few days later, unfortunately, her mother passed away. Uh, four months ago, I was in Ukraine and I visited uh, a camp for children who lost their parents due to the war. The name of the camp, Jan Ukrainian. And I was so inspired that on that day when I arrived, I couldn't leave. I stayed there for a couple of more days because I saw the light in these children and I questioned myself, what can I do to help them to continue to see the beauty because uh, they were in a occupied city. They saw a lot of shit. And uh, it was a very beautiful experience for me to spend time with these children, to share their story. So it was the beginning of the project. Uh, and I want also to mention story of one boy. Uh, uh, for me, it's a crazy story because uh, he was in Bucha. I don't know if you know uh, Bucha was one of the most terrible places uh, during the war. And uh, his mom, uh, who, is, who was uh, 36 years old, died in their house. And they didn't have another choice but uh, uh, help me with my English. <laughs> 
so they buried her on the backyard of uh, their house and I talked to uh, this boy Vlad and he said he's going there and he's uh, bringing money and food to, to the gravestone uh, because uh, he says I want to be sure he uh, has something to eat, he uh, have, uh, she, uh, she has money to buy uh, something, I want to care of her. So I have some plans to go to this camp again and uh, to work with uh, these children. And by the way, if you have any ideas how you can contribute, uh, it's possible and definitely these children need that. A year ago, first time after I fled Ukraine, I went back home it was, and it was a very beautiful experience. Uh, I had a collaboration with Ukrainian Railways. I took studio light to the railway station in Kiev and I decided it's the right place to take portraits of people because during the war, Railway station uh, became a place where people say goodbye to each other. A lot of families never saw each other again. And I was so inspired to see everyone there. For me, it's hard to think how people who live in these uh, circumstances are so happy. They go to the work, between that they go to the bomb shelter and back. And when uh, some of my friends oh, here in the United States, some people ask me, oh, we saw pictures from King Kiev, someone drinks coffee, uh, the life is normal. I say, it pretend to be normal, of course. Of course, people want to continue to live, but it's not the same life. And I think that is how it's not supposed to be. So uh, there are portraits which we got as a result. So for me, this story was a great example of joyful participation in the sorrow of life. And I'm deeply inspired by every Ukrainian now. The story about Carmel by the sea, I think one, is one of the most important stories in my life. Uh, of course, I never expected that someday I will live here. But six or seven years ago, I was deeply uh, inspired by Clint Eastwood. Uh, I never been to California. I visited the United States only once and uh, I really loved his movies and I loved to read his interviews and I felt him as my grandfather. So I wanted, uh, <laughs> Yeah, he is wise and definitely I felt yeah, he has a great personality and for me my photographs is the best way to say thank you. But for me this dream of, was so big. Anyway, I decided to write in Google uh, where does Clint Eastwood live? <laughs> <laughs> and there was something like Carmel, Carmel by the sea. And I thought it's so strange because Carmel by the ocean, why did they say Carmel by the sea? <laughs> anyway, uh, two years later, I visited California first time in my life. My ex-husband and I uh, had a road trip from San Francisco to Los Angeles and I said, let's stop in that Carmel by the sea. So we stopped just for 15 minutes and for me it was such a great feeling to know Queen Eastwood lives here. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, yeah, we spent just 15 minutes at the beach because we um, had a long, long way to Los Angeles uh, by PCH and I left. But since day, there wasn't a day when I didn't think about Carmel. I wanted to go back <laughs> to experience this beauty. Uh, Two years later, I came again. I didn't know people in California. I had only uh, one friend and I didn't drive the car. I said, can you go with me, please, to Carmel by the sea, to Mission Ranch? <laughs> 
So we went there and I knew Clint is that guy who doesn't use social media, Facebook, he even doesn't have a website. What is the best way uh, to tell him my story? And I wrote a letter. <laughs> And they came to Mission Ranch and I asked, can you give this letter to Clint Eastwood, please? I showed my works just to explain that uh, I'm not just a photographer. I had many publications for magazines. I, I, had, I have a lot of um, experience. And uh, they said, it's a beautiful story, but no. And uh, <laughs> so, they wrote on an napkin from Mission Ranch the address of post office and Warner Brothers, and they said, you can send it uh, there. So one day before my flight to Ukraine, I went to Warner Brothers, and I came there, and they told my story. Hi, I flew all the way from Ukraine to California just because I have a dream of taking pictures of Clint Eastwood. I showed my portfolio, and they said, it's beautiful story very beautiful but no <laughs> i was like what you even can take it you work uh, you work on post office so i see thousands of letters and they say go it's truly really a beautiful story but we want to be honest with you we threw them away every day nobody reads these letters on that warner brothers i said please take it i need uh, to know that I did everything from myself, the rest is the universe. And they said no. <laughs> <laughs> so I left Ukraine, uh, I left to Ukraine, I cried and um, I thought, yeah, maybe this dream is so big. So for me, it became the reason to visit Carmel again and again, again. and again. again. And there was one moment when I uh, gave up, uh, I decided to leave Carmel and today, unfortunately, we have a limit of time, so it's not enough time to tell the whole story, but long story short, when I left Carmel with this decision to give up, a lot of crazy things happened to me. I lost money, energy, I went to a very terrible situation, so, which was for me a reminder, Kate, your life usually uh, doesn't look like this. It means you went from the right path. And uh, I questioned myself, okay, I have only one, one or two days I had before my flight uh, back to Ukraine. And I questioned myself, should I go there just for one day? What is my chance? Uh, what is the percent that I can meet him or something like that? And I remember I opened an Instagram and his uh, granddaughter, Grilin Eastwood, left a message. Hey, Kate, uh, what is the, the name of this location? I was like, what? <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I couldn't ask her, but I felt it's a good sign. I should go back. Uh, the only way uh, to go back was by truck because I already uh, spent a lot of money. Uh, I mean, big, big truck. <laughs> so uh, I went back to Carmel and I remember that day when I was sitting at Carmel uh, River State Beach and I cried uh, because also on that trip, first time in my life, I drove the car. I mean, first time after uh, that moment when I uh, got my driver license and I came there and everyone in Carmel, I was asking about Clint Eastwood. I didn't tell my story why I'm here, why I'm asking, but I was uh, at the end of all of these trips. I had a bunch of stories about Clint Eastwood and for me it was such a nice feeling to know, oh my gosh, he's such a nice man, I need to meet him. So I was at this beach and I cried and I say to myself, it, it already doesn't matter if I ever meet him because I found this place which definitely felt like home since day one. Uh, I, I'm driving the car surprisingly and the most important thing, I met many, many wonderful people 
and I forgot about that dream. But one hour later, I met him and I told my story and I asked about taking pictures and he said, of course. <laughs> And it's funny that uh, almost a year ago I moved to Carmel and since that day I never met him again. But one month ago I uh, was thinking why I never saw him again. And I just started to think about that and I met him. For me it was so important to, to tell this story uh, just to share that sometimes you look back and you realize the role certain people played in your life. Uh, and it's just surprisingly uh, because this dream brought me much, much more than just portraits of Clint Eastwood. Uh, I deeply believe that when you follow your passion, uh, the voice of your heart, you put yourself on a kind of track uh, where you start to meet people who are in the field of your bliss, of your dream and doors will open for you. Today I also want to share uh, one of, I think, most important my works. Uh, I filmed this in Ukraine a few years, uh, a few months before the war. And for me, it's surprisingly how we can predict what will happen later, because the main sense of this work was to show the rebirth of Ukraine and the rebirth of DNA. Uh, it was the collaboration with Ukrainian theater actors, with director Lucia Panamarenko. Uh, I think this work is one of the most beautiful uh, my works. I am grateful to every one of you and I hope if today after this talk you will have, a, uh, you will feel you want to call to your beloved ones to say I love you. And uh, maybe my story is not the easiest story, but it's more about the beauty than about the pain. And I think the life is about this. Sometimes we think, uh, sometimes we are complaining on everything, on simple things, but uh, the most important thing is life by itself. Thanks to everyone and thank you for your patience with my inquiry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We come back up here. <laughs> I was about to leave. <laughs> um, thank you so much for telling your story you. with the, you know, expression and vulnerability and humor. Um, we have time for a couple questions before we hear from the community. First, Kate, I want to say thank you so much for being so brave and being such an inspiration to all of us here. Wow, Thank this was you. really moving and beautiful. And I think you have wonderful English. <laughs> I'm <Thank> so impressed. <laughs> I And this is probably a silly question, but I was wondering, where did you meet Clint Eastwood? Was it on the Mission beach? Ranch. At the beach? No, no, at oh. Mission Ranch. It oh. was that day when I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to drink, but honestly, I needed to use the restroom. <laughs> I went there and then I decided to go inside. And honestly, one person said, Kate, Clint is here. I, I said, no way, because in Mission Range, I was like, every time I look at the door. And he said, no, uh, he went through the back door. <laughs> I said, no way. But I saw how people are coming to him and asking about photographs. I hate situations like this. I will never go to the table in the restaurant to ask about that. Uh, because I worked with many famous people in Ukraine, Russia, Europe, and I witnessed many situations how people are just crazy. You are famous. Oh, I also had a lot of messages and requests. 
uh, just because people knew I work with someone famous and it's easy for them uh, to ask, hey Kate, can you ask this guy to come to my friend's wedding, ask him to take a picture for, uh, for me. Uh, so uh, I, I felt like, no, I never will go there. Mm -hmm. And they saw all of these people and they felt like, oh my gosh, I need this more than they. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, a couple of hours later, when he left, uh, I asked him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're very brave. I'm so glad you did. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Kate, for your beautiful Thank story. You. Very touching. I wanted to know what are you doing now with your photography in Carmel by the Sea, or. Uh, Carmel by the Sea is a beautiful home base. I travel a lot for work to other places like Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, but now I'm trying to transform my life because I traveled for many, many years, like constantly every day or two, new city, new city. I had a project in Italy where during two months we visited 49 cities. It means every day. Uh, new city, so for me it's um, a stage of transformation and now I'm working on a project, uh, The Hero's Journey, about people and their transitions in life and uh, most of the time uh, there are stories how people face challenges and it seems very dark at the very beginning and how much beauty was born from this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. We really appreciate it. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you. <laughs> it's hard to ima imagine a story that, like, <clears throat> sorry, it just weaves together so much of this area. The fact that we have this uh, heritage of attracting, attracting artists of extraordinary caliber from all over the world, sort of the original uh, bohemian spirit of this area. And, uh, and then it, it's like this thoroughly modern story uh, that has Clint Eastwood. It's just amazing. I mean, what, <laughs> and so thank you again, Kate. We really appreciate it. Um, so up next, uh, we have a new poet laureate uh, in our midst. And uh, her name is Rochelle. And a friend of mine, Tom Russert, um, reached out to me like the, the day that uh, Rochelle was announced. And, uh, and I reached out to her and she agreed to come and speak. And so uh, Rochelle's gonna be here next month, uh, same location. We'll be back at Wave Street. Uh, we have a couple of kind of openers. We have uh, Julie is gonna sing, Ann Sibley's gonna sing. Yeah, do I have that right? Anna or Ann? Ann Sibley, yeah, Ann Sibley, yeah. And, uh, and then we're also gonna hear about Sean's uh, new live uh, game show, uh, which, which is debuting when, Sean? March 23rd, so just a week after. So he'll give us kind of a flavor and a taste uh, of, of what he's working on. Um, you know, it's amazing to see kind of creative projects sort of, you know, that are, that are new and, and, and sort of flowing from our community. That's amazing. Well, thank you. Everybody have a great rest of your day. You can, you can hang out. Thank you to the Wave Street team. Thank you to Kate. Thank you to Cassie. Thank you to Jillian. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye.